up guys people it's your girl Camille if you're thinking about doing a fast or you've already done a fast but you're not sure if it worked or what it's really for today we're gonna go over five examples in the Bible on spiritual fasting all right let's get to it <laughs> Moses. In the book of Exodus and God has just told Moses that all right it's time for my people to go into the promised land but because they have been prideful and stubborn I mean God was dropping manna from the sky right he was providing for them every day but yet they still for some reason wanted like golden calves and stuff so they were like a hot mess going up and down up and down with their faithfulness. And so he's like, because their stubbornness and they're being prideful, y'all can go in the promised land, but I'm not coming with you, right? God's like, I promise you this, I'm gonna keep that, but I'm not coming with you. And so Moses begins to plead to him and say, but Lord, how are, how are we gonna be set apart from the other people in the land? Um, we need your protection, right? So he's just starting to plead to him and trying to convince him like, yes, to come. By the way, God already knows what he's gonna do, but who has to go through Moses? So God eventually says, all right, I'll come with you and I'll make a covenant with you. So Moses being thankful, uh, thanks God. So they're already, keep in mind, they're already talking, right? God and, and Moses are talking and then he asks him, all right, Lord, show me your presence. And so God says, all right, but I'm not going to show you my face because you did, you would die, right? God is unbelievably powerful. Um, and so he says, all right, meet me at this rock and I'll show you my presence. I'll walk across. Um, I'm not going to show you, show, you show you my face. I'll walk across. I'm not going to show you my face. And I'm going to proclaim that I am Lord and, and I am your God. That's basically Exodus 33 and 34. And then we get to Exodus 34, 28. And it says, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant and the Ten Commandments. So, all that time, those 40 days, that fast, I don't think he fasted to get ready for the presence of the Lord. He was in the presence of the Lord, didn't want to leave. There was instruction to be written down. And in that time, he didn't eat or drink any water for 40 days. The next example I'm going to go over um, is probably the most uh, it's probably the most famous fast. Uh, it's the Daniel fast. Here we have Daniel. He's a prophet, and at this time he is third in command under the king. And so he's in a land where he has a lot of power and also responsibility over the people in that land. And God gives him a vision and a word, a tribulation and hardship. And so Daniel begins to mourn. He mourns for his people. He mourns for, for himself. And he's asking, I believe, he doesn't actually say, but I believe he's asking God for understanding. He's asking God for uh, probably deliverance, for him to change his mind. Um, and so here's what the scripture actually says. It's Daniel 10, 2 uh, through 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were full. So he didn't even anoint himself, so he wasn't, you know, like, um, probably a little, a little stank. Just saying, it's probably a little stank. <laughs> and, uh, so after those those three weeks, an angel came to him, and the first thing he said was, uh, "One, don't be afraid, because people tend to be afraid when they see see angels. I think angels, um, you know, angels aren't humans with wings on their back. <laughs> the Bible describes angels in there. Um, they're amazing, right? They're, they're they're nothing like we've ever seen, and so." He says, fear not, um, I'm sorry I was late to the to the show, essentially. I heard you the first day, or the Lord heard you the first day, but I was busy. So first of all, 
I was surprised that angels could even be held up. Like, is, are there not enough angels for everyone? So who, who knows about that? But he said he was held up uh, battling basically demons. And Michael, one of the chief angels, had to come and help him. And when Michael came, then he was able to leave and help Daniel out. So he came to Daniel after that. And he said, all right, you know, God hurt you the first day. It took him some time to get to you, but now I'm here. And now that I'm here, I'm going to explain to you um, the word from God. I'm going to explain to you what God told you. And the first thing was that, you know, this isn't going to happen right away, right? This is, this is, you know, this is going to be many days after you. And he began to give him some understanding and some peace of mind about what God had told, told him. Third example we're going to go to is Ezra. Ezra was a high priest and he was a priest in particular who was very well versed in the Mosaic law or the laws of Moses. He was also respected by the king at the time. And the, because the king respected him, um, he also learned to respect God. Um, and so he actually decreed over the land that uh, the Jews or the Israelites, that the Israelites and the Levites uh, that were in their land could go back to, to Jerusalem. Now, Ezra had already been traveling back and forth between Babylon and Jerusalem, and it took a while. It was a long journey. And so he knew that it would be difficult for all of the Israelites and Levites um, to go on this journey. Because Ezra was known as a man of God, and because he told the king that the hand of God was upon him, and that in his travels, when he was traveling from Babylon to Jerusalem, the hand of God was on him. That is what was protecting him, not the king's protection, but because he was a man of God. When the king told him, all right, you can take your people with you, which were hundreds of people, he's in a situation where, you know, logically, he probably should have asked, in the world's logic, he should have asked the king for protection. Basically, he said it would be shameful for him, for him to come because he had already said the hand of God was on him. And so what does that look like, right? So he wanted to make it known that God would also protect all of these people as well. And so what he asked for uh, was for him and other people to fast. So in Ezra chapter eight, verse 23, it says, so we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. It was a group fast, right? So uh, Ezra fasted for traveling protection. The fourth example is Esther. Here's a Jewish woman who became queen over a foreign land where there weren't a lot of Jewish people. In fact, Jewish people um, weren't, that pop weren't, pop weren't that popular in the land. For this reason, she did not tell the king that, she, that she was Jewish. And this was under the instruction of her uncle, Mordecai. And Mordecai had been helping her out um, all through the process, meeting the king and, and everything else. So Mordecai is um, very much entangled into Esther's story. Um, and so along comes this other official under the king named Haman. And Haman, uh, when he became official, the king decreed that everyone is supposed to bow down to, to Haman. Haman was from a particular tribe that did not uh, historically, like, did not like Jewish people. Or the, or the Jewish people and the people of Haman did not get along. There was some bad blood there. And so when Haman came to Mordecai, he was like, all right, bow down to me. Mordecai was like, no, I'm not going to bow down to you. And everyone was perplexed. And so the guards asked him, you know, why aren't you bowing down to, to Haman? The king decreed this. And he simply said, no, I'm, I'm Jewish. That's all. He didn't give any other explanation. He was like, I'm Jewish. Now, some people believe that he did that because he was saying, okay, I'm Jewish. Only bow down to my God. Uh, they think that Haman was probably wearing an idol. I think it's somewhere in between where it was bad blood between the tribes and also, you're not God, I'm not about to bow down to you. Um, also, my niece is the queen. I don't know if that was going through his head, but it could have been. Um, 
And so Haman went back to the king and said, yo, you got people, Jewish people, because the only thing he said was that he was Jewish. So he said, yo, these Jews out here are disrespecting me. And because you said to respect me, really, they disrespecting you. And so the king gets upset and he has this decree and he says, all right, because the Jewish people are disrespecting me, since you say this, all right, all of them, all of them got to die. All of them going to be persecuted. And so they start tormenting the land, tormenting all the Jewish people. Mordecai um, becomes incredibly upset, obviously, but then he goes to his niece, who is, the, who is the queen, and he's like, yo, you have to do something. You have to, you have to come and defend your people. This is why God put you here, right? To defend his people. Now, this would have been fine and dandy if at the time there wasn't a law, you know, if the, if the king did not call you, then you are not to, supposed to approach, the, approach the king, even if you're the queen. So she was already worried because if she were to just go to the king and be like, yo, why are you tormenting the Jews? First, he didn't know she was Jewish. Um, two, she wasn't supposed to approach him, even as the queen. If she did, lawfully, she should die. So what did, what did she do? She said, all right, Mordecai, and this is going to be Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, Shush, in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I will also, and my maidens, will fast likewise. And I will go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So here Esther was fasting and asking other people to fast. So this was another group fast for protection and for favor from the king. And so long story short, he changes his mind. He, he has favor on her. Um, Haman is the one who becomes punished and God protects his people. The last one, and certainly not the least, Jesus. Jesus had just gotten baptized by John the Baptist. Uh, and if you know that, uh, that, 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 uh, not story, I hate saying story, but if you know that, um, uh, story, <laughs> then, uh, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, uh, the Holy Spirit descended on, upon him, uh, and right after that, the Holy Spirit, so that was the end of chapter 3. So right at the beginning of chapter 4, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. So the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness. It says, to be tempted of the devil. And... When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. So after that, he was hungry. So first I want to say, you know, Holy Spirit is descending upon him at that time after being baptized to give us a full pictures, picture of what it means for us to be reconciled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, furthermore, he fasted for 40 days, 40 often being the number of going through a trial and, and completion, 40 days. And I believe that is to signify that, you know, for 40 days, he didn't eat of this, of this earth's food. He stripped away everything that was of the world so that he could be fully reunited with the Holy Spirit. And likewise, we should be fully reconciled and reunited with the Holy Spirit. When we were in the Garden of Eden, we were covered. We had a certain covering over us. We walked with God. So we need to be reconciled with the Holy Spirit, reconciled with God as he designed. And so when Jesus did that, and when we do that, and the devil comes along and tips him, even though he's starving, trust me, I know he was starving, if you watched the first video, I told you I fasted for 40 days, only drinking water. 
he was starving. He was not tempted to eat. And so when we're fully reckoned, reconciled and the, and the devil tries to tempt us know that he will not prevail because we're going to be completely in unity with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will lead us and command us and strengthen us so that's five examples of the Bible of spiritual fasting and I really do believe this gives a great outline of the different types of fast different reasons for fasting um i think it's interesting to note that a lot of these fasts you know god didn't tell them like okay now it's time for you to fast so i can do yada 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 it was they knew that fasting and prayer works daniel was mourning for his people so he fasted moses was in the presence of the lord so he fasted ezra and and Esther, Ezra and Esther needed protection, needed help, needed favor. So they fasted because they knew if I come before the Lord, if I come fully pleading to the Lord and relying on him, he's going to show up. So that's the second video. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys learned and, and that this motivate, motivated you in your walk in Christ and as you further learn about spiritual fasting. Um, in the third video and fourth video, we're gonna go over how to fast. Um, there are certain rules that the, actual, that the Bible actually goes through and guidelines. Um, and then we'll go over the power of fasting. But through these five examples, you can see the power of fasting, you know, understanding, um, being in the presence of God, protection, favor. A lot of this information I got from the spiritual fasting app um, that my husband put together uh, where he put you know every account that's in the Bible of fasting or where it mentions fasting and the guidelines of fasting are all in that all in that app and you can get that on the Android store and it's really good um, as you watch these videos and read on your own through the Bible um, to have that so you know exactly where to look and then you can go into your Bible and you can you can Make sure you get the background, you know, don't just pull out the scriptures, but get the background, get the full context of what the Bible is saying about spiritual fasting, because it is a, it is very powerful. It's very powerful. All right. Thanks guys. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, for the YouTube algorithm, like comment below. Um, you gotta see the merch behind me. Um, this is my passion. This is my ministry. Check out the link below. I really do. I want to build a community, you know, where we can go out and we can approach people with the knowledge that we learn together, with the faith that we're increasing as we go through the Bible, going out, repping God. Um, it's really what, it, what it's all about. All right. See you. I'm out.